I'm here with my cute little daughter. What's your name? Iris. Oh my gosh, she forgot her name. <laughs> what is it? Iris! Iris! Cool. So we are here because we wanted to teach you guys. Penguin! And Penguin, what do we want to teach them? A dog safety. Dog safety and also how to stop biting and jumping. Uh-huh. Right? With kids because we have so many uh, owners like out there. Like this. Dog taking toy. Ask to pet. Well, you're doing really good at your reading. We have a list of things that, that we want to cover, and apparently Iris is really into it. Cool. Okay. All right. So, if you have kids and you also have a dog, this is going to really help your kids learn how to interact with your dogs properly at home, but also how to interact with dogs properly outside of your home. So, if you run into um, an unknown dog. Hi, Stacy. Stacy said hi to you, Iris. Yay! <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. So, Stacy, if you have any questions um, as you're watching this, let us know. And also, if you have any friends that have kids with dogs and they are struggling with something, please let us know because we would love to cover any topics around kids with dogs today. So, as you can see, I mean, these kids are really active, hi. right? And, and if they're hi. acting like this, which is normal, but they're in the dog's space. What could happen? What, Iris, do you even know this question? What if, let's say, let's say this cute little dog was back here, okay? Okay. And he's lying down on his place. Cute! Yeah, and then you wanted to do yoga. And you did it right here, right in front of the dog. The doggy would not like that. The doggy would not like that at why but not? The doggy would... lying down, and the puppy's like, Wah. why wouldn't the doggy like that? Well, because it's in its space. It's in its space, and do you think that it might scare the dog? Could it be like a sudden move, and the dog's like, oh, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that was going to happen? Yeah. And of course, guys, I realize not all dogs are like this. Some dogs are just really calm um, in the midst of those things, but in general, we want to be able to teach our kids to to give the dogs what? Uh, food. Space. Ah, oh, treats and space. Space when we are being what? I don't know. Like moving around a lot, oh, like oh, have oh, a lot oh, of energy, oh. right? Especially if the other dog is, is being calm, right? If the dog's over here being calm and relaxing. Yeah, we should get the doggy a dog bed. Okay. Okay. How about we pretend I'm the dog, okay? So, I'll be, can I be okay. the dog? Okay, you're the dog. Okay, you're lying. So, you're the dog, okay? So then if I come over here and I'm just like, <coughs> how do you start feeling? <coughs> yeah, and what might you do then? You could, absolutely. Now remember guys, even friendly dogs can bite if they feel like their space is being invaded and they're getting spooked. <coughs> Yeah, yeah. So then it would be a good idea for me to then back away and give the dog space and then go, you know, go ask my parent, you know, go get help from your, your parents, right? And also, you know, it's a really good idea if you have like a place for your dog to relax, like a crate or a bed, like don't have it in the middle of the play area. Like we would have it off to the side probably you know, somewhere that's out of the middle of the room. Like, I would even think over there, Iris. Yeah, right here, right here. Like, see how Perfect. that's completely out of the way and the dog can kind of have some space or it could even be in a whole separate room, you know, like a bedroom that um, your kids don't play with. And so it could maybe be the parent's bedroom um, or something, you know, in that nature so the dog has some, some good space. Stacey, have you ever had, or anybody that's watching this actually, because um, they want to include everybody, because some of you guys are going to be watching the um, replay or might join in on here at any time. Have you ever had an interaction where your kids are just kind of in the dog space when, when they're resting? Yeah, like this. Yeah, see, now you're out of the dog space. Uh-huh. Right? So if the dog's resting over there, right? 
then... And call Spirit just out of its space. Yeah, right. So the dog's all the way over here resting. Then you have plenty of space to play, and Wait, that dog can lay down. The dog right? is on the wooden floor. And he needs a pillow. He needs a pillow? Oh, right. Here you go, doggy. Okay, are you making him a bed? Yeah. Because he has no bed. Okay, okay, make a nice bed for doggy. And we're putting it off to the side. Yeah, but the right? doggy has yeah. his little toy. So he has his little space. Good job. Yeah, and our little play area. Oh, our beautiful plant. Yeah. Our precious Okay, Iris, let's kind of, yeah. we want to stay on topic too, okay? Oh, 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 oh. Yep, yep. Okay, so have any of you guys ever had a situation where your kids have, you know, not given the dog space when they've been in like a hyper Ooh. mode? Um, so let's see, Stacy says, my puppy has gotten into my older dog space and the older dogs let him know they weren't happy. See, it is the same thing. I'm glad you're sharing that because, the, you know, the older dogs want to rest and then the younger dog comes along. So thinking yeah, about like giving you're the... the older dog, and here's the other older dog. Okay, can and I? And the younger dog. Iris, we gotta take turns talking, okay? Okay. Okay. So if talking. the older dog has his space, and you have like a little place for him to go in, or a crate, or something where he can, you know, be separated from the puppies, that can help. And then you can teach the puppies to then, you know, give to avoid those situations or move away on command or even put your older dog in a room that's enclosed or an X-Pen, you know, that's, that's completely enclosed. Um, but you can do the same thing with, with, you know, a dog and a kid too. Great. Okay. So Iris, do we want to, do we want to do the one about taking a toy? Yeah, I'll grab a toy. Okay. So my favorite toy. Iris's favorite toy penguin. And Which her name is Fluffy. Fluffy. That's Fluffy. Okay. What's the dog's name? The doggy's name will be Marshmallow. Marshmallow. S'more. S'more. Okay. S'more is going to come along and put Fluffy in his mouth. Your favorite toy. Oh, no. Yeah, and they're both the same color. So, <laughs> what do you do, Iris? Do you think that's gonna work? Do you think no. it's telling the puppy stop? So, um, dog taking a toy at me. Those are notes for me. Do you remember what you do? This is good practice, right? Because a lot of kids they don't know what to do. Do you what do you if you grab this toy and start playing with it with them, what do you think the puppy's gonna do? Um, play with it. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Is that how you gonna get the toy back? Well, I'm playing with it, so that might loosen it up, and let's say it fall out of his mouth when we were playing toy. Okay, that could hypothetically happen. Your toy could also get torn in the process, and then your dog got just, what did we say the dog's name was? S'more. S'more. S'more then got rewarded for grabbing your toy. So then he's more than likely to want to do it again. So you got your toy back, and then S'more's going, oh, I want to play Chuck again, and goes aggressive. And then you run away to keep the toy, and then what's the dog going to do? Run! <laughs> and he's going to start jumping and biting, right? <laughs> and trying to get the toy. So do you think that's going to work? No. So if the dog is trying to get the toy, you don't just run. Let's say the dog's in. Okay. And you're facing this side. So, you might want to turn your back and walk away. Turn your back and walk away. Into a different room. And go into a different room? Yeah. Yeah, you could do that very calmly. Oh. Yeah, and then could you get help from an adult? Yes, Mom. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Good job. So, if a dog is jumping on you. You would stand you up and you would face this way. And then the dog goes, wait, I'm not getting attention because your back is turned. So it becomes really boring. And then when can you give the dog attention? Play with it. But what do you, when do you want to give the attention? What is the dog doing? Do you want to give him attention when he's jumping? No. You want to give him attention when he's bored and happy. When he's bored and happy. So he's got four feet on the ground. Or... 
You want to throw it at, at the to- the our <laughs> toy at the dog. So we want to like go like that. Like the dog, you might want to like sit. We're going off our feet. Okay, so the dog is sitting or four and on the And maybe floor. if your dog likes hugs. So the dog could be sitting. Or could have four on the floor. And then yeah, what? and maybe if, if dog, if some dogs, well some dogs like hugs, you could even hug it. Oh, that's what we want to teach them not to do, to not hug. So how could we give the dog attention if they're sitting or standing instead of jumping on you? Oh, I wish I could hug it! I know. Pet it. You could pet it? Could you give it a treat? No, I'm not going to. <laughs> that might be okay depending on the dog, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but that's not a full-blown hug. Okay, no, so let's, let's do a full demonstration. So the, stand up, dog's jumping. You're turning your back. Okay, dog stops and chooses to sit. What do you do? Pet it. Pet it? Cute. Or give it a treat. Oh, it's jumping again. <laughs> now what do you do? Yep, there you go. Now it's sitting. Oh my god. What do you do now? Pet it. Not with your foot. Not with your foot. I'll show you what you're not supposed to do. Not supposed to do. Your head's cut off. Oh well. It's not a perfect video, guys. Who cares? No, oh, that. why wouldn't we do that? It will not feel comfy. It gets in its own face. You're covering up his eyes. So you don't want to use your foot, even though I love using my feet. You want to use your hand. Yes, hand. Now, do you, do you think that we have to do this over and over again? The dog jumps on you again, arr, 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 especially when it's a puppy. Oh, turn the back. He might still jump for a little while, and then he might eventually sit. Every dog's different, right? Well, if he keeps doing that, I'm not going to pet him. Well, no, he's sitting now. Well, he keeps doing back and forth. But you got to reward the good behavior for it to, for it to increase. Uh, good puppy, good puppy. Good there you puppy. go, yeah. Uh, yeah, it should feel like over and over again so monotonous and boring, right? So parents, it's a good idea to help the kids with this because it is a lot of attention that you need to be Here's another with. thing that oh. you do not want to do. Okay, remember one person at a time. Can I go first? I was talking in the middle of my sentence. Can I complete my sentence, please? Okay. So, if the dog is jumping, we got to have that repetition and the parents stepping in can help because... It needs to be done over and over and over and over and over again. And it's really easy for kids to kind of get bored. Okay? All right. Job, Iris. Now can I talk? Absolutely. We just want to take turns so we're not talking at the same time. Okay. Do not do this to the doggy. Do not do it. Do not let children or baby to do this. Don't. Even do it. Don't sit on the dog. <gasps> Guys, what do you think might happen if we sit on the dog? It will bark, it will get hurt, because the spine's there. The spine is right there? Yeah, and it's not strong enough to get a, like a, a 71 pound girl. Yeah. And here's another thing that you do not want to do to your pet dog. I just, now, why, don't, why don't we want to hug the dog? On the neck. Because it will think you're killing it. I can. Because huh? they're part of the wolf pack. Well, yeah, because they're descended from wolves in the wild. Cute. What happens if a wolf is being grabbed on the neck? It's probably getting attacked by a predator, huh? Yeah, so then... And mosquitoes outside. Oh, okay. So then, so then the dog would start feeling what? Or the wolf would start feeling what? Ouchie. Scared, It would be like this. It would start feeling scared, Like, huh? try to walk towards me. Yeah, it would start feeling scared, but he can't move away if I'm hugging it. Hug me on the he neck. can't move away. Hug me on the neck. So if he can't move away and he's scared, what, what might he do? Bite. bite, yeah, absolutely. Ow, ow, ow. How many of you guys on here that are watching right now or in the future think know about this? Do you guys know that hugging dogs is 
Um, not the best thing to do. I would love for you to comment yes or no on that. By the way, here's another thing that you do not want to do. Never do this in your whole life. Okay. Mom, you might want to watch out. Oh, I need to move. Never jump over a dog. Whoa. I didn't it. Don't that do that. That frighten them. They, let's say um, the dog's doing this and jumped over it. It would have got hit in the a mouth. your kid to interact with your dog appropriately. Oh, let's do a dog that. fighting over a blanket. Okay, but we want to stay on topic, so I was just talking about appropriate ways to interact with a dog. <sighs> okay. Yeah? So, what are some of those appropriate ways, Iris? Um, that you can do a dog to not hurt it. So, we don't want to run or hug the dog or we, like, jump over the dog. the dog. How would we play with the dog? Are you so, I'm going to if the dog like scratches, you might do that. Okay, wait. Here, Stacy actually is interacting with us. She says, "Sit on the floor first. Ooh, do you think having the dog sit first before you play with them could be a good idea? Yeah. Okay. So the doggy is sitting. sitting. And then, what would you do to play with them? Well, I would give him scratches. You could scratch Let's him. Let's say okay. the dog's favorite spot. <gasps> The favorite spot is on the neck. I love it. Ah, oh, And Some dogs really love being scratched under the ears. Yeah. Yeah. This dog really likes it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another way is to pet it. Right. And do you think that slow petting or fast petting is going to keep a dog calmer? Slow petting, because if you do fast petting, it's going to be like, oh! Yeah, it, it's going to amp the dog up. So, if we teach our kids to pet slowly when we want the dog to be calmer, that's like going to help. Like same thing of cats. Sometimes when a dog or, or a cat is at somebody's house, you might want to be slow. So. Walk slow, go down slow. Right. So, they'll feel more calm. Like, let's say a cat is right here. Right. Okay. Which I don't have. You have to be slow. If this is your first time going there, you want to be very slow. Well, I've went slow when a cat barely knowed me, and it purred. Okay. And it, like, <sighs> touched my legs. It wanted pets. Okay, let's hold on that. that let's hold on that topic, because we still want to talk about how to appropriately play, okay? And be slow. Okay. So being so with an unknown dog is good. And maybe good. the cat might even go on your lap and it might want pets. Sure, if it's a new dog that you don't know well, being slow is good. And if you're slow with your own dog at home, that will generally help them my calm down and be more Stephanie. comfortable. Absolutely. I love my favorite Steffi. Mm. That's awesome, Iris. So can we show them, like, what are some ways that you would play with a dog? Would you play tug or fetch? Yeah? Let's say... 
Let's say we're going to play <gasps> tug. You want to play tug? Okay, so then the dog's jumping on you. Would you start playing tug right now? No. What would you do? Turn your back. Okay, now the dog is sitting. Could you start playing tug now? Yeah. <sighs> now what if the dog accidentally bites your hand while you're playing tug? You say, ouch. Ouch, and turn your... Turn your back and be a treat. Now that's if, if the dog's being aggressively biting during tug, then contact me. And here me. is another wait, thing. Wait, wait, I'm talking. No, then make sure you talking. contact me. I'm talking about if the dog is like play biting, you know, while you're playing tug, okay? Remember, we want to take turns talking, not talking at the same time, okay? All right, what did you want to say, Iris? Okay, so, um, wait, what? Ah, oh, there we go. Um, Never in your whole life say bad dog. That will hurt the puppy's feelings. That's a good idea. You can, if the dog's being good, you say good dog. If the dog's not being good, you never say bad dog. Okay, come back over where they can see you. Okay, that's good advice, Iris. Now, I don't know how many of you guys have, like, I'm trying to remember that Japanese person, but... He did studying of the water molecules and how what we say affects the molecules, right? So if we're calling our dog bad all the time, we're actually sending them a lot of negative energy. Yeah, some yeah. people say bad dog to their own puppy. Yeah, and it, you're better off training them what to do instead. Yeah, never mm -hmm. ever say bad dog. Never. Good idea. In your whole life. Good idea. Now, if we do, then we just want to have compassion and forgive ourselves, right? Because we're not going to do everything perfectly all the time. Now, what if we wanted to play fetch, Iris? You want to play fetch with the frisbee or the Kong? Um. I think you have the ball in the car. We'll play fetch with this. Okay. So uh, let's let's say there's peanut butter and stuff. Okay. But first, what do we want the dog to be doing before we throw the the toy? Sitting, that's a good choice, okay. So you're gonna ask the dog to sit or just wait for the dog to sit? Both. Yeah, you can do either one, yep. What are you gonna do right now? Um, I'm gonna tell the dog to please sit, puppy. Let's say the dog's name is S'more. Okay. Please sit, S'more, good girl. Good job. Go back. Masuri Emoto. Yeah, I think that's who it is, Stacy. The um, from Japan and was studying about the water molecules. Thank you. Well, by the way, if it's still in his mouth, he might drop it when you throw something else. Oh, really? Especially if they want it? Absolutely. Okay, so yeah. I. I'm s'more. Please sit. Good girl. You're a good girl today. Go. with the toy, right? Yeah. Now, Iris, let's come over here, okay? Because when, when your back's there, everyone is seeing, when your back is right here, everyone's seeing your back. <laughs> um, My back? Yeah, they want to see your cute face. Okay. Come on, see, they can see your face. There we go. Okay, let's scoot over a little bit. Okay, so... The little puppy. They have the toy in their mouth. We can do what? Tug. If we want the toy back. Tug. No, okay. tug is going to encourage them to keep it in their mouth. Remember? Well, it might like it might be like, oh, I need to get a better grip. Right. They might eventually spit it out, but then they're getting rewarded for taking that toy. 
So we talked about, you just said it, you're trading off what? A different toy. Trading off a different toy. And Stacy also wrote treats. Absolutely. So if they have this toy in their mouth and you wanted to get it, get it, get it back, right? You could, you could get a treat. You want to give a treat and show them how to do that? You can even, you want to show them how you used a clicker with it? Oh, he spit out the toy already and he grabbed it again. Arr, I'm not ready to give it up. What do we do? S'more, please sit. Okay, now we're rewarding the sit. Okay, what are we going to do if we want to spit out the toy? Give him a treat. Show him the treat. And then if he wants to treat, what is he going to do? Spit it out. Then once you click, when he spits out the <coughs> toy, yep, now give him the treat. Yep, and you could train your dog to drop that way. Yep. In fact, Stacy's got a little puppy that needs to learn how to drop. So Stacy, you could start working on that. Where when Oscar gets a rock in his mouth, can trade it off for a treat. Okay? Oh, we want to add on to that because work. the dog could also then be like, oh, I want to grab a rock to get a treat. So that's not the final stage, but that's what we would start Smaller, with. Smaller, please sit. Okay, let's ask everyone. Does this make sense on how to get a toy or an object out of your dog's mouth? And Stacy, I would definitely love for you to comment on that um, because I know that's something that you need help with. Okay, so all sorts of fun things. Now, do we keep clicking over and over again? No. What that happens? Will hurt the puppy's ear. Okay, I don't know that it'll hurt their ears, but what's going to happen over time? They're going to think they're going to get a. And if they aren't getting a treat when you're clicking, then is the clicker going to have meaning anymore? No. So we want to stop clicking unless we're going to train the dog, okay? All right. Let's see what Stacy wrote. Okay. Do you want to read it? Uh, the treats. Treat. The treats. Yep, you got taste it. Taste so much better than rocks. <laughs> Iris is clicking. Good job. Okay, give Stacy a treat. I'm gonna give Stacy a treat. To Stacy, you can pretend that's chocolate. I don't know, right? Do you like chocolate, Stacy? <laughs> if you do, pretend it's chocolate. What are some treats? That, let's ask Stacy what some treats she likes. What What are some treats that you like? Right? Because here's the thing too, as parents. Um, ha ha. Mm. Thank you. Sometimes we need to reward ourselves because it's a lot of work when you have kids and then there's a lot when there's dog in the picture too. So make sure you're doing positive reinforcement to oh, yourself um, too. Chocolate. Oh, she loves chocolate. You like chocolate? Do we do a reward based system with you, Iris? <gasps> then what we about? should get the Kong and Wait. put chocolate in it. Oh, and put chocolate in it to give to Stacy? Chocolate, chocolate, and then give it to Stacy. Chocolate. There you go, Stacy. Enjoy the chocolate Kong. Now we don't really want to do that for dogs, guys. I hope you know that, right? Just making sure. No chocolate to the dogs. Alright, that's good. I think Stacy got a good lick. Okay, Iris, the computer's actually gonna fall over if you keep doing that. Okay. Alright. Alright. Okay. Yummy! <laughs> I have a question for you. Do we do a rewards chart with you? Yeah. For IXL? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, parents, you can do a rewards chart for your kids. Iris, what are some things that we could reward the kids for doing? I can sit back and you need to give them a popsicle. This is true, but I like that. That's good. Well, what I about see. with the dogs? If we wanted to help kids learn how to interact with the dogs properly, what things could you reward that the kids are doing with the dogs? Well, if they're helping the dog sit 
and um, not jump and bark, we could get the dog a treat. Okay, we so we could get the kid uh, whatever it wants. So we get the dog a treat for City, and then we're rewarding the kid for doing what? For the dog City. But what is the kid doing that's encouraging the dog to sit? Sitting, please. Asking the dog to sit? Okay. But if the dog's jumping, are they rewarding the jumping? Or what would they do with their body? Well, if they are jumping, you would turn your back. They would mm -hmm. get bored. Mm -hmm. So we could reward the kid for turning their back when the dog's jumping. Mm -hmm. We could also reward the kid for petting the dog when the dog is sitting. Mm -hmm. So you could have a reward chart that says, turn back when dog jumps. Oh, look! Pet when dog sits. Iris sneeze her own kids and dog came to YouTube channel. Oh yeah, we could create that for you. YouTube did the, did you just say YouTube? <laughs> I have YouTube! I love that idea, Stacy. That's wonderful. A list. Okay. A list. A yeah. list. A list. Here's but a list. What else was on that list, Iris? <laughs> you want me to look? List. Okay. List. List. Oh, list. yes. Okay, if we're outside, right, and we run into dogs outside, right? Let's do that. Let's get our other small dog. That one has a collar on it. So we're outside. Outside, I love outside. Okay, now you don't know me, Iris. I'm just a stranger with a dog. We should put the plant down as a tree. Okay, put the plant down, we got a tree. We're hiking. Jerry, okay. here we go. We're hiking Beautiful along. Plants. And here comes a dog, and you want to pet the dog. What do you do, Iris? Ask! Why in the heck would you need to ask to pet a dog? Well, because the dog has an owner, and if you don't ask, the dog might bite. Mm-hmm. And yeah. The dog might bite. He might not be comfortable with kids. Right? So here's that unknown dog. Show me what you do. Absolutely not. This dog hates kids. Thank you so much for asking. I really appreciate it. Oh my God. Wow, Iris, thank God you asked. You could have gotten bit. It was such a good choice. <laughs> Why does your dog hate kids? Some dogs do. Did you know that? No. Some dogs are really uncomfortable around kids. How dare dogs? They just are scared and they don't know. We got to teach them that kids are okay. I, I think I might need to be an adult soon. You need to be an adult? <sighs> Okay, now let's ask again. Let's see if the dog's gonna do something different this time. Um, actually this dog is really hyper and I'm worried he might knock you over. So I'm gonna say no. Okay. Right, that happens sometimes. Haven't we run into some dogs where the owner's like, oh my gosh, my dog it jumps a lot. You might not want to pet him. Yeah, we've had that happen, haven't we? Okay, let's ask one more time and see what kind of dog we have this time. Can I pet your dog? <gasps> Absolutely, you can pet my dog. He loves kids. Oh. Very nice. Can now, I scratch his neck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Iris, what if you had like four friends with you in addition to you? Five kids? Would it be a good idea to have them all come over and pet the dog all at once? Ow, ow, ow! The dog could really get overwhelmed and bite. Now, I'm going to do it. Now, do it. Uh, ask to pet my dog. Wait, wait. So, if we had five kids, what would be a good idea to do? Um, We would ask to give the dog a squeeze so it does not like. Give the dog space so that there's not five kids swarming around its face and even have maybe like one, two, three, four, five. Okay. That's surrounding the whole puppy. Well, five out surrounding because we want him to be able to back away if he wants. 
So off to the sides, so he has room to move away if he wants, and then probably pet one or two kids at a time. Pet the dog. Okay, you want me to ask about the dog this time? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. One sec, I need to get ready. Oh my gosh, that's such a cute dog. Can I pet your dog? unknown dog. There's many people out there that have dogs that are really that uneasy with people and they're really trying to do their best with training and if we can now help them. Okay, wait, I'm talking. I'm talking. Uh -huh. One person at a time. Mm -hmm. It's a really good idea to ask so that you can honor them and that dog, especially if that owner is trying to do a lot of dog training work and help their dog be more comfortable with people. It's really nice if you're able to ask first. Okay. All right, Iris, what about if a dog is tethered out? Oh, did you You said you wanted to do something, didn't you? What did mm -hmm. you want to do? Um, how about um, you try to ask two more times, then we'll do what you wanted to do. Oh, okay, you wanted two more times with me. All right, here we go. Puppy. Iris' turn. Puppy. Okay. Puppy. And guys, you know, role playing like this really helps your kids learn. Right. How many of you guys role play with your kids like, if you have kids? Is that, hey, face please. Okay. <laughs> Almost knocked me over. Um, how many of you guys do role play with your kids? I would love to know because that really helps it get into their long term memory um, if you act it out. Okay, are you going to come out so we can do this? Yeah. We're going to lose our audience if we have this long time gap. Am I just supposed to go up to you? You're a mess. Okay. All right. All right. So you're just walking. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think I missed that. Okay. Can I pet your dog? Sorry. Kitty bark. Ow! 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 <laughs> it's a loud bark. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. I'll give her some space. And then the next morning. Okay. Oh. Hi. Can I pet your dog? Sorry. She has a heart attack. She's had a heart attack. <laughs> Oh my gosh. A heart attack. Oh no. Uh, are you taking your dog to the vet? Yeah. Do you need help yeah, getting there? I'm the only one. Oh my, where's your mom? She died. Oh my goodness. That's not good. Iris, is that a good idea to be one and with the dog all by yourself? I don't think that's a good idea. I'm joking. I'm not one. I'm nine. Well, this is a good learning. A lot of, a lot of people tell me all the time. Can that wait, wait, that they let their kids walk their dogs alone. It's not a good idea to do that until they're older. Okay? Yeah, because, I agree. Because, um, if the, especially if the dog doesn't know how to walk Lucy on the leash, I actually had a friend of mine that um, had um, her child got bit, and the neighbor, I think it was their nine-year-old, um, took out their dog, and the dog was very barky and had aggression problems, and... Um, she was trying to hold the leash, and she couldn't hold on to the leash, and well, the dog ran and hit, bit the, bit the child. Yes. She could have, um, if she was an adult or a kid, um, she could have did this, so, um, the dog would not bite the kid. Well, that's a large responsibility for a nine-year-old to do. Well, alright, let's finish, uh, what the dog has a heart attack. The doggy had a heart attack. Can you please take her to the vet? Oh, so I can touch this dog now? Can you please pet her? Can I please help her and take her to the vet? I would love to I help have her and take her to the vet. Police. And I think I think we need to go like find your parents because They like, got shot by a gun! Okay, Iris, this, this is an educational video. <laughs> Come on. You're being silly. <laughs> All right, let's let's teach them stuff that actually is. Come on, let's go. Things that happen in real life. Come here, buddy. Okay. Come on, puppy. All right. Can we show them what a fearful dog looks like? Okay. This is I did this since I was eight years. Ugh. Okay, so 
Let's set that on the clicker. Remember, you don't want to keep clicking. This is my then, dog's around. Well, we are doing a dog video, so we're, so there is dogs around. Okay. <clears throat> Alrighty. I'll show you what a fearful dog. There's, why why would we care what a fearful dog looks like? Why do we want to teach kids what a fearful dog looks like? So, um, they know what a fearful dog looks like. So if a fearful dog is there, they cannot pet it. And they want to give the dog what? Space. Yes. Guys, what, what do you see in a fearful dog? What do you think the ears and the tail is doing? Because Iris doesn't have ears and a tail. Stacy, what do you think the ears and tails do in a fearful dog? I know what they would do. What do they do? The ears are go here, here, okay, and ears, ears laid back. Yeah, they'll be like, like this, mm -hmm. this, or this, and the tail will be like this. No, the tail usually goes down. Yeah, so show all them again because I can see the tail. And like if this. they have no tail or a short tail. Won't be able to go down all the way. Right, right. Yeah, now, if they have long tail, it will go all the way underneath. It could, if they're that scared, yeah. Hey, go on. They go down. Oh, She's talking about they the, ears go the, down. the ears and the tail go down when they're scared. Yes. Good job, Stacy. Yeah. Yeah. Where now, where, what do the ears and the tail do when the dog is in aggressive stance, guys? Who knows? Where do they go that? <laughs> There's an aggressive dog. Yeah. Can you show him on the side? Oscar was born without a tail. Yeah, so, so yeah, some dogs are that sad. Um, Aww, so poor puppy. Sometimes there might be a little stub. Depends. Does, does Oscar have a little stub? I can't remember. Um, if he has a little stub, you can still look at the base of the tail and it will still go at different heights so if it's more scared that base of that tail is going to go down and if dog has a long tail it'll go like all the way underneath yeah yeah um okay so the aggressive dog what is his tail oh do? look nothing at all nothing at all so then the, it, the tail won't probably be a good communicator with oscar huh we got to look at other things in the body oh the little picture of a puppy so um do we know like when a dog is scared the body goes more down right yeah like we showed so when a dog is aggressive the body goes more down no aggressive up up uh, yeah uh. so what did the ears and the tail do the ears will go like this yeah, and what does the tail do? Up. Up, and it's going to wag really fast, possibly. If they're really angry, they'll have a flag tail. <laughs> it actually will look like this, Iris, really up high. And Cute. We see a dog barking in the yard when you're walking past Cute. the house with a high tail like that, the ears are forward and running and barking. Do you go and try to pet that dog and make friends? No way. Good job. If yeah. the dog's struggling, you try to help it. Well, what if it's an unknown dog? Do you just go up to it? If it's scared and it needs an owner because it lost it, I could be a better. So then you, you want to get an adult to help you, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't want to just go up to a random unknown dog, okay? My pup's good. Can we show them what a happy dog looks like, Iris? Mm. Are you tired? Yeah. Have I seen? Here, we're doing a video. Mm. <gasps> Let's do the food one. Okay, well, let's show a happy dog, and then we can do the food one, and then we'll probably wrap up here. Yeah, we'll do the food on with me holding my ice cream, and I'm going to eat it. Okay. Okay, okay, what do we do with the happy dog? A happy dog? Or what does a happy dog look like, I mean? Yes. And their ears and tail are at neutral height. That's different for every dog, but they're not super high or super down. They're like this. And show them the tail usually has a wide wag. 
Here, honey. Can I move over so I can show them the good view of the tail? So, it could be a circular wag. What? Or a really wide wag. I did neutral not know height. that. Okay, uh. now you're learning something new. Yeah. Okay, so, you're going to go get some ice cream? Yeah, I'm going to eat it too. Okay, and you're going to teach us what to do? Yeah. Great. Okay, while Iris is doing that, if you guys are liking what you're seeing so far, um, Cold Nose Companions and I are doing a kid and dog class in June. Um, we'll probably also be doing one later in the summer. It's June, uh, the week of June 12th, and it's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 10 to uh, somewhere ending between 11 and 11.30. We're giving us a little leeway because this is the first time with doing a class Yay! with kids and dogs. Hold on, I'm talking. Um, and we're going to be really working on teaching the kids how to appropriately interact with the dogs, train the dogs basic things, um, do enrichment um, with the dogs, um, and do uh, trick training, and also how to read dog body language. And the parents will go home with reward charts um, that they can do with their kids to reward them when they are um, reading the dog's behavior properly or properly um, interacting with the dog in appropriate ways. And then they can bring in the reward charts um, to the class and cash it in um, for some fun little treats um, from myself and um, Christine Good with Cold Nose Companions. Um, so if you are interested in that class, I am going to put the link um, below, but definitely you can message me and comment below um, and I can um, send you um, to the link for you to uh, sign up. We would love to have you there. So. Iris is ready to show us what to do when we're eating. One track. Oh, um, okay, yes. What was it again? Uh, um, I forgot. Okay. So first of all, if we do have a dog and they're in the same room, do you think sitting down on the floor, I know we have a video here, but logically, in everyday life, would you sit down and eat on the floor with ice cream if we, if we have a dog? No. Well, right. Where could you go? You're gonna go over on. Okay, let's let's make a, let's sit on the sofa, Iris. Okay, they can't see you up there. We're, we we're trying I? to teach them. Okay, you the could sit on the sofa. Ugh. One sec. Well, I would not sit on the sofa because some dogs <clears throat> can go on. Okay, sit on the sofa, buddy. You're right. Some dogs might jump on the sofa. Absolutely. We would want to train them to... Can you sit up so they can see you? Because you're not really on the video. There you go. They want to see your cute face. I can't watch. Wait. So as you can see, my child is very spirited. So if any of you guys have that type of personality, I can help you. Oh, what happened? Our computer just shut off. <laughs> Strange. All right, my, our, my computer just shut off. It must have had, like, some sleep mode on it, or I don't know what that was about. Um, okay, <laughs> so, then, um, if your dog, you know, wants to jump up and eat... What would you do, Iris, if they're trying to, you would stand up and turn your back, okay? Would you run around with the food? Absolutely not. Come over so I can see you on the camera. the dog got on this chair. Okay. So you'd want to turn your back, right? I'd get the dog on the chair. Oh, what hill? Okay. So the dog jumped on the chair, then what would you do? Then they're going to be able to get the food. Then you're gonna turn your back and walk away. And walk away. Very nice, Iris. Oh, That's great. Okay, honey, we gotta be able to finish up, so let's stay on target. Okay. Okay. All right. So you could, parents, you guys could train your dog to go to their bed. Okay, so they could learn to go onto a bed and learn to stay there while your kids are eating. I did that when I had Seiki, and we will be training our dogs to go to the place in the um, kids and dog class. It's called a uh, family dog. Um, so that can be helpful, but it is important for your kids to learn, you know, 
the appropriate locations to eat and what to do if the dog is trying to jump up and get the food. Because um, if they do run off or um, reward the dog for jumping up, then the dog is going to do more of that. So that's another thing you could have on the reward chart. Um, you know, is, is your kid um, choosing to sit at such and such location when they're eating and reward that? Are they ch choosing to turn their back if the dog is jumping? Um, or even rewarding the dog for staying on their, on their bed. Okay. All right, so Iris is sitting down on the floor and eating um, because that's where we have the camera. But that's not what we would want to do when there's a dog in the same room, just so that's clear. Um, I want okay. this forever. So Stacy says nothing at all, and I completely forgot what I had asked at that moment. Mom, I just said that. Couple of, what was that? A couple what was seconds that related ago. to? Do you remember? No, you don't remember either? Okay. Well, if you want um, me to comment on that, let me know what I had asked you, because I completely forgot at the moment. All right. Cool. So, again, if any of you guys have kids and dogs, message below. I will let you know um, how to register for, excuse me, so they can see me. No tail. The, uh, the family dog class, which will be held up in Chardon um, in June. Um, and we are allowing six dogs in the class. Um, parents, you could have um, one kid. The second kid is... Um, 50% off and they do need to come with a guardian because we want to make sure that we're doing everything safely But we're doing tons of enrichment options tricks Training reading geog behavior and reward based charts our whole goal is to make it positive for the kids and the dogs We want it fun 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 and we want kids to learn how to know do those appropriate interactions so that you parents can feel more at peace and and peace of mind. Oh yeah, no tail, that's what she was talking about. That's, yeah, we had already looked at that comment. You were right, okay. Thank you, Stacy. Um, okay guys, and I am gonna do the best that I can to maintain our Facebook lives. Um, the summer is here and things are changing, but at this moment, I'm still gonna aim to be here at two o'clock on Wednesdays to um, do dog skills, the human end of training. Um, so feel free to come back. Stacey, thanks for joining us today. Everyone that is here um, or watching the replay, make sure you share this video with others. Why do we want to share this video with others, Iris? So the kids know what to do with the dog. So the kids know what to do with the dog. Why would they want to know what to do with the dog? Who cares? Uh, how dare you say who cares? Oh my gosh, how dare me? Why would we care? How dare you? I'm going to slap you. Oh, was that a good thing to do? Why would we want to teach the kids? Why do we want to teach the kids, Iris? Well, because so they know what to do when a dog is around. So you know what to do when like the dog is around. Like if the dog is upset, don't pet it. If the dog's scared, don't pet it. We want and to don't hug the dog by the neck so dang tart. That's right. Not tart. I said tart. Not, not tart. Hard. We want to help the kids and dogs so the kids can stay yeah, you safe. Have to pet it. They don't get bit, and so the families can. And don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. And if they know these things, then the families can live in peace, huh? Mm -hmm. You can help people out. All right, you want to wave goodbye, Iris? Yeah, one sec. Uh, one sec. Give me one sec. one sec. All right, apparently Iris has something really exciting planned here. One oh, we got we got to get sec. Penguin. One sec. Okay, well, while she's doing that, if, I also do private dog training, so if you are interested in doing that, um, there is a link to learn more <coughs> um, pinned at the top as well. The doggy will be by you. Okay, and we got to get the doggies all set up here. One dog will be Okay, by. this dog here. All right. What? Oh, other way. Okay, let's get your cute little face on there. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming. Happy summer.